So just a quick rundown on the homemade nozzle that I did. It's no real secret, it's really just a copy of the, uh, the existing nozzles you can get a hold of. Uh, this one here is made up mainly of parts you can get at most hardware stores, uh, except for the nozzles. These nozzles actually come with the guns that you get in the standard Harbor Freight or similar cabinets. Um, still unsure why these don't really work well, maybe it's to do with the entry angle. Um, but I'm yet to see someone get one of these to work properly uh, with a wet blast cabinet. Uh, so here's the nozzle that was in, in my video before. Like I mentioned, I don't really want to pull it apart because it's working so well at the moment. Uh, but I've got a few other bits to kind of demonstrate how I did it and I'll at least take the nozzle off to show you on the inside. So this body here, it's just an inline filter. Hopefully that focuses well enough for you to see. Um, uh, just a 15mm half inch uh, fitting there. Brass fittings, you get in most hardware stores. Um, they start out, they've got a, a gauze on the inside of here. So you just take the cap off, uh, that's for cleaning it out anyway. Pull the gauze out, and then there's uh, very little modification you actually have to do. So hopefully it's going to focus. If I bring that up close, you can see here the way the casting works. There's a bit of a, uh, a divot in there. And that's just to, to divert the uh, flow on the inside down towards the basket before... Uh, coming out the other side. So I actually use these backwards. If I show you the uh, Chinese ones that I brought in, the reason I bought them in is you can see that that divot isn't as prominent. There's still a little one there, but it makes it easier to, to machine out. So I don't know if you can see it in there. Hopefully it's clear enough. You can see the deviation in there that's designed to divert the, the water down towards the catchment basket. So on this one here, what I had to do is I, I put it in my lathe and with a large drill bit, I machined it out as much as I could get without coming up through the side. Uh, th these are about $11 New Zealand um, from Bunnings Warehouse. Uh, don't know if Mitre 10 Megadorm. I got that one from Bunnings. But these are a couple of bucks. Um, I bought a whole box of them from China. And like I say, I got them because of the shape of that casting. So you start by machining that out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this out. I think it's a bit tight. Uh, but this, this basket will actually come out as well. So you remove that, uh, machine out the, the uh, deviation on the inside there just to make it a, a straight flow. Once you've done that, this one here, uh, like I said, I don't want to pull it apart, but this 10mm hose barb, I drilled into the back of it, put a thread in there, and then on the inside is, hopefully that'll focus, just a bit of alloy in there that's been machined. So that alloy runs right the way down, move it back so you can see, right the way down from here, and then screws into this fitting here. That fitting there then threads into the cap that I used, just drilled out, threaded the cap, and then that fits straight into the back. So that nozzle that you can see in there that I've machined up, just runs straight through there, past the inlet for the water, and then along. On this side, all I did was machine out the back of the, the cap there, uh, drilled it out, tapped it in, and then used a quarter inch or 10 mil uh, hose barb fitting. Um, so pretty simple really. Uh, flow for your water comes in, uh, and then out through the nozzle. Uh, this is down here. Out through the nozzle. And then straight through the back is where your air comes through and just accelerates that slurry mixture out through your nozzle and out onto your part. Uh, these don't usually fit straight away. Um, I fit that in there. It's just a little bit tight, so you've got to machine it out ever so slightly uh, to make it fit. You see it fits in that way, not that way. Uh, but once you've done that, uh, the fitting on the end will just screw over top and hold it in place like so. So pretty simple really. Um, this bit here is a little bit longer than it needs to be, but that was how I machined it by the time I found a few of these other style of fittings. Um, but it, it seems to work. It's not too long, it's not a, not a pain or anything. But it's actually quite a compact unit compared to the ones that you buy. Um, so as I see on, on Justin Strike's video, he wanted something a little bit smaller and, uh, and for more uh, defined work. Also, I think they only go down to six millimeter and these nozzles, where these ones, they go right the way down. I, I think it's four millimeter, four or five millimeter. Uh, yeah, see, that one goes down to four millimeter. You usually get a packet of these 
uh, with the these cabinets anyway. So if you've got one of these cabinets, you've probably got these lying around. Uh, you can get the rest of these fittings from a hardware store. Um, I suppose you could just drill and, and glue them together with uh, with epoxy if you wanted, but I find they're a lot better if you can put them together with thread, um, just because you get a little bit of adjustment in there. If you don't quite get the nozzle length right, uh, sorry, the air needle on the inside, if you don't quite get that length right and your tolerance is, is too great or too small within that cone, it can cause feeding issues. Um, so just by having that threaded, you, you've got a little bit of adjustment in there and it makes it easier to get it set up. But there's not a lot to them, they're pretty simple. Um, and like I say, they're pretty easy to get these brass fittings. Um, if anyone in your family has done plumbing like uh, we've got out here, you've probably got most of these lying around in your garage anyway. Uh, if you don't, they're easy enough to get from the hardware store. So that's how I've done mine. Um, as you can see, pretty simple. They seem to work well enough, um, and as I've just demonstrated, it will actually work as a uh, as a siphon feed as well. Um, just keep in mind, if you do go to use it as a siphon feed, uh, I originally threw this hose on because it was what I had lying around and, and what I saw first, but the diameter of it's too large, so the venturi action from the air rushing through uh, past that uh, deviation and diameter on the inside of the nozzle there, um, it will draw a... Uh, uh, amount of slurry up through that pipe, but because the diameter is quite thick on that one The velocity was too low and I think it was actually losing a lot of the the media on the way up So switching to the smaller diameter actually fixed that uh, just as one of the problems um, But I'm still going to play around with that because I find it's quite an interesting concept um, And we'll actually open up the type of pumps that you can use in these vapor blast cabinets and, and might make it even more accessible so uh, to be honest, I have to attribute that idea to Justin from Justin's Trikes. If I hadn't seen that video, I probably wouldn't have even considered it. Um, so, bit of kudos sent that way. Uh, like I say, if you haven't watched his videos, get over and have a look at them. They're a pretty good resource on any, for, for anyone who's trying to make their own vapor blast cabinets. Um, and I have mentioned other videos in my past videos, so if you have a flick through, you, uh, you might get linked onto something else that will help you. Uh, but like I say, just trying to make these a little bit more accessible for everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this video and my previous videos. Uh, I have one coming up shortly on how I make my wipers, like I mentioned before, and probably another one on pumps that I have been, uh, at the moment, just trying to work out how I want to uh, put it together to make it flow a little bit better, uh, make it more easily understandable, uh, but we'll see how I go with that. Um, hopefully, in the least, it's informative, um, just like I hope this one has been informative. And um, I'd like to see more videos of, of more people putting their setups together um, just because it gives the rest of the community some more ideas um, and uh, really enjoying the innovation uh, of, of the type of builds that have been done recently, more and more coming out by the week. Um, so yeah, Merry Christmas and uh, hope to see your builds and stay safe.